definite disqualification. Roy Jones Jr. The IBF President Marion Muhammad, Supervisor Mahasan Scott, and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, the Executive Director is Greg Serb. Introducing to you our three judges scoring the bat from ringside from Edmond, Oklahoma, Gary Ritter. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Adelaide Triplet. From Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. And the third man in the ring, the referee in charge of this bout. Working in this, his 86th world title bout, Frank Cappuccino. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Reading, Pennsylvania, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with silver trim, hailing from St. Louis, Missouri. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds even. His record stands at 47 wins, three losses, one draw, with 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the number one middleweight contender by the WBA. Here is the former WBA super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Carl Daniels. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with silver trim, fighting out of and representing his hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He weighed in at a trim and ready 158 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 40 wins, two losses, one draw, 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making an unprecedented 15th defense of his middleweight title. Here is the consensus fighter of the year, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Introducing uh, Bernard, the Executioner Hopkins. <laughs> and once again, our referee in charge, Frank Cappuccino, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Bernard, Carl, Bernard. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. I leave it with you. I, I can take, I'll take it. Bernard Hopkins says that it's not just winning, it's how he wins. He understands the stakes because Roy Jones is going to be watching this and he comes next. Now this Daniel's got not any sweat on his body whatsoever. Hopkins is a little juicy, got a little wetness on him, so he stands. It's possible a quick knockout. Here we go, the beginning of round one. Daniel's the southpaw. Hopkins a conventional fighter. Bernard told us yesterday his game plan isn't so much about worrying about keeping his outside foot outside of Daniel's lead foot, but rather to take the fight up the middle through Daniel's chest. Stop! Break! 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 Daniel's got to make sure he confuses. Make sure that Hopkins think, hey, you're not in the ring with your last opponent. I'm somebody different. Confuse him for at least two or three rounds and then get wild with him. Pick up the pace in the fourth, fifth, and sixth round if he's got that much seven. Hopkins got to 
make certain he doesn't give this guy any extra courage. And make sure he takes the power early. It's worth mentioning. Daniels has not fought since December of 2000. 13-month layoff, second longest of his career. So part of the problem is the first six months were promoter problems. Then he says the number one contender, he didn't want to risk getting in the ring with anyone else until he had a shot at Hopkins. Hence, here we are. So far, so good for Daniels. Got Hopkins confused, swinging and missing, no, no, making him go no, back no, to his stop. old step back, step back. unorthodox right, file and all back. of that, get him confused. You don't back. want him, he looked like a master boxer the last time. Don't make him look good this time. Daniels if, comes through with a straight left hand. fight in front of your hometown or all of your friends. You want to look good, make yourself look good, and the next thing you know, you're not getting off the canvas. And that's what Hopkins in a real strange position in this game. Well, Hopkins told us he knew it was going to be an interesting situation fighting a southpaw. But Art Hopkins trying to feel his way through here as we come to a close in the first round. If you haven't seen it yet, catch Sunday's replay of Picture Perfect. The stories behind the greatest photos in sports. This documentary takes a look back through the golden era of sports photography and some of the most compelling moments ever captured on film. with Roy Jones when he was an alternate on the 1988 Olympic team. He did some pretty good shadow boxing in that first round, George. <laughs> That's what you want to do if you're Daniels. Keep this thing so unorthodox so you can unnerve Bernard Hopkins. Don't let him hit you with anything. Make him miss a lot. Then you got a fight on your hands. Ah, uh, kick him up, kick him up, man. Hopkins, up. the looping left hook. Then he came back with a Low right uppercut. That's the Hopkins you want. Make him start fouling. Show exactly who he is. Don't make him look good. Then he'll get desperate and you can do something. When you say show exactly who he is, George, what is happening uh, there? In his, throughout his whole career, he's not been a master boxer. He's been a guy who likes to hit below the belt, hit behind the back, things of that nature. Bring that out of him, and then you can bring him back to the reality. Look, you're not a master boxer. Make him start slugging, then you outpoint him. Then go for a knockout in the last two or three rounds if you're still around. And that's what Daniel's going to have to do. And so far, he's doing a good job. Make him miss. Hopkins comes through with a right uppercut. The two exchanging power punches at close range. Hopkins going to work at the bottom of Carl Daniels. The pace picking up here in the middle of the second round. I know Hopkins would like to look good as he did in his last fight. But some nope. guys don't let you look good, right? That's, that's what you want to do. Be the kind of guy who does not make him look good. Make him look raggedy, and then every time he misses, you hit him with two or three shots. Maybe the judges will pick up on it. Dan 
Daniels pokes a right uppercut. Hopkins catching. Daniels with a counter left hook to the head. Daniels got to land something hard to make Hopkins decide that, hey, don't be so co courageous against him. Make him a little reserved with his power. Got to hit him with something hard. Daniel has got to hit him with something hard. All right, stop. Both of them. Stop. Stop. Step back. Step back, Bernard. Step back. Keep in mind tonight, it's a very special night of boxing here on HBO. A rare opportunity to see two undisputed champions back to back. Right now, let's head down to Miami and Jim Lampley. All right, Fran, while you cover the fight in Reading, Pennsylvania, we're here in the American Airlines Arena, where later this evening, undisputed light heavyweight champion Roy Jones will strut his stuff once again in a mandatory title defense against Glenn Kelly of Australia. It's been a tumultuous week for Jones, who has unveiled a new rap song, and meanwhile, if you missed the premiere, catch a replay of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel with the Super Bowl tomorrow. What better time to look at sports books and gambling? We'll go behind the scenes to reveal the factors considered in setting the line for major sports events. And incidentally, the Rams remain 14-point favorites in New Orleans. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. So from Miami, let's go back to the Pennsylvania Dutch country. Two undisputed champions performing on the same evening in separate venues back to Reading. Daniels brought in Tommy Brooks to train him for this fight. Tommy Brooks, formerly with Mike Tyson, Cornell Whitaker, Vander Holyfield, one of the top guys out there. CompuBot's power shots through two rounds. Hopkins starting to heat up. 22 of 54, 41%. Daniels, 11 of 25 at a 44% clip. Good, good. Now it's what I want. Daniel is starting to be the aggressor. Cautiously being aggressive. But he's still making uh, Hopkins miss. The only thing is, he's got to hit him with something once he make, makes a miss. Not seeing enough from a counter perspective. Again. No, it would be a bright on day for him if he can make certain that he makes Hopkins pay for every miss. Hard shot to the body. And the two now trying to exchange blows at close range. Daniel was able to sneak in a couple that time. Hopkins sneaking some in as well. Left and right jab by Daniel, right in the, between the defense of Hopkins. Hopkins is doing a good job of going to the body to make certain that this guy gets weaker every round. That's the only good thing he's doing so far in my book. since he's having trouble reaching the head so far. What a good pro will do. <laughs> Straight through the defense of Carl Daniels comes Bernard Hopkins. to stand in the middle of the ring and not defend himself. He's got to be moving or punching at all times. Daniels and Hopkins. Explosive here to end the third round. Daniels showing some heart.
The crowd comes alive. Starting a little too far away. Just a little too far away. Close in a little bit. We're a little closer. Get on low. Despite the perceived pressure to perform sensationally, Hopkins showing poise and patience, just fighting the man in front of him, going to the body. And sometimes just a little under the body. All right, let's bring in unofficial ringside scorer Arthur McCanty Sr. to see how he has it scored through three. I have it. Uh, I have it scored 30 to 27 after the, uh, after the third. And um, Hopkins uh, is, is is a better in the exchange on the inside as I see it, and a very 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 powerful punch with that right cross. And there you saw evidence of that right cross busting right through the defense of Carl Daniels. And now Frank Cappuccino warning both fighters, keep it clean. Uh, Larry Mercanti scored it for two rounds to one for Hopkins. I gave the first to the challenger. I think the challenger did squeeze out some around too, but he did so much better that last round because he was able to make Hopkins miss, as I've been saying all night, and then counter and hit him with something. You heard Bowie Fisher, Hopkins' trainer, in between rounds. Ooh. Hopkins ripped the left hook to the head of Carl Daniels. And when, and when Hopkins jumped on him, he jumped right into a good straight right hand as well. Bowie Fisher telling Hopkins, you're too far away, get in close. And Bernard listening to his longtime trainer, for 13 years. Hopkins is going for power now. He's throwing one or two shots at a time. He's taking his time to aim good. No, 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 stop, stop. 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 Daniel once again is standing there. He's not moving his feet nor his head. Can't do that with Hopkins. You got to move something at all times. Hard throw punches. Daniel's not doing either. George, do you, do you believe those body shots from Hopkins are starting to have an effect on Daniel's movement? No doubt about it. He's been able to put those body punches in there. But look, you've been in training for six weeks. It's not Nothing wrong with getting somebody shots. <laughs> Keep moving. <laughs> Bernard Hopkins using the left hook this evening pretty much at will. now with that quick half cross half jab half hook that he tends to throw you 
instructions from Daniel's corner. He's doing everything right. He's just not throwing enough punches. So he's not doing everything right. Very hard to accommodate a guy when he's hitting you with that kind of power. Hopkins is laying in some body shots that make you afraid to throw shots. George, speaking of power, according to CompuBox, Hopkins landed 64% of those power shots in the fourth round. 16 of 25. All those shots were in that body, and that's where it really counts. It takes your power away, makes your legs weak, and it gets you kind of scared to stay. Stand in front of him and hit him with anything. Daniels not where he wants to be in the corner. And he wisely ties up and gets out. Let him go, let him go, Carl. Let him out, let him out. Okay. Hopkins, two right hands, slap him to the head and the body. If you're Daniel, under no circumstances do you want to get into these exchanges. Don't exchange shots. Do what you're going to do and get out of there if you're Daniel. Daniel is trying to move, but it seems that he seems to stop right in front of Hopkins. He moves around and then stops, and that's when Hopkins takes advantage and tees off. That's what happens when you get so many body shots early in a fight. You just can't get away when you want to. Daniel told him to come on, man. I don't think he meant that. <laughs> Daniels hurt in the body and set up for a spectacular finish somewhere along the way. Well, one undisputed champion is performing very strongly on this very special night of World Championship Boxing. Let's send it down now to Jim Lampley in Miami to check in on light heavyweight champ Roy Jones. A beautiful warm night in the magic city of Miami and while the city celebrates its Saturday night Roy Jones sits in his dressing room and watches the combat in Reading Pennsylvania and shows you his opinion of the Daniels Hopkins fight as he waits his turn on HBO to take on Len Kelly the Australian challenger for Jones's light heavyweight crowd ever comfortable in the spotlight Roy Jones as he watches in Miami, and we take you back for more of the middleweight action in Reddit. Put the pressure in there, baby. Two undisputed champions on the same night on HBO. Hopkins relying for the most part solely on power punches 28 of 43 in round five 65 percent and Daniels output slowing down six of 18 a whole lot less clinching in this fight than I thought there might be George yeah, Daniel understandably is trying to get out of the way. He doesn't really want to stand and hug with this guy. Problem is, you get out of the way and don't throw shots. It's just going to give Hopkins more courage to come after you with harder shots. Maybe Clinton made a better strategy for him. Now, Hopkins. 
Hopkins is showing no fear. He just stands there to turn the hook properly like you teaching a class of boxing. What about this point, George? Bernard Hopkins has fought, for the most part, his entire career as a middleweight. Carl Daniels started out as a junior welterweight. This is only his 11th fight as a middleweight. Does that have an effect on his power? I don't think any of it has any effects. We saw with Trin Phoenix Trinidad move up and up power as he, as he went up. Woo! Hopkins got him following him around now without moving his head. Fall into trap, so Daniel is better do something quick. You don't want to fall a punch around and not move your head or your feet. This is where Hopkins is at his best when you follow him a little bit, not do anything. this he did not just come here to survive oh he's taking some hard shots and he's trying his best to get in good one or two more but you can see now he's trying to hide his body those hard body shots are starting to pay dividends Hopkins continues to work the right midsection of Carl Daniels with his left hook. Daniels fights through, though, with a quick one, too. Listen, you're finishing up the round now. Baby, get close. Get close. Yes, sir. Go with the body. Go in the body. Go in that body. When you're on the inside, when he's trying to tie you up, let that stuff go, baby. Hey, look. This is seven round. Keep him up, Bernard. Be in trouble if you don't. Stop him, baby, for me. Stop him, baby, Stop him, son. Stop him. You may see there is a big welt along the left eye of Hopkins. Doesn't look dangerous at this point. All right, six of the scheduled 12 rounds are in the books. Let's bring in Arthur McCanty Sr. to see how he has the fight score. I have the score of Hopkins by a score of 60 to 54 in favor of Hopkins. Uh, Daniels is mainly on the defense, and he's getting trapped in the corners too much, and that's a very, very dangerous place for fighters to be. Now, I think it's a wonderful thing that Daniel has got Hopkins thinking about maybe the side of his face now. He can just tap it a few times. He can change things just a little bit, not a whole lot. Better get there quick. Because Hopkins is still on the aggressive attack. about fighting the softball you got to make sure you keep your head out of the way these head butts can really get mess up things a lot more than even a punch Ooh. there's a lot of sound to it but not a lot of power because he made it a looping shot Hopkins did Daniels was able to get his defense up but on Hopkins simply quicker to the punch all night long starting to look at the side of Hopkins head trying to land a shot on that little sore spot he's got to lead with his left 
and just throw the old right hook. All right, stop, stop. Break. Step back, step back, step back. But George, should he be so concerned with that? Oh, you got to have some out of his game. He's got to have something now to concern himself with. He hasn't had anything else to give him any kind of courage, any kind of confidence. That's the only thing he has. I think he should center in on it. Right, left. Sovereign Center certainly getting their money's worth as Bernard Hopkins and Carl Daniels trade big shots at close range. a chance. Well, you heard Daniel's trainer, Tommy Brooks, say, I'm not going to lie to you, you're behind, especially being in his hometown. Now you have to make it a fight. I told him he's going to have to take Hopkins out. That's probably the only opportunity that Hopkins would need if him to start trying to get a little aggressive. He'll clean him out. He's in an awkward position now, a boxer. Not much a whoa. But he catches Hopkins there, two shots to the head. Scott Daniels keep his eye, he keeps his eyes right on Hopkins, as though he's looking for something. Releasing a straight right hand. Daniel is trying to find himself in the pocket of Hopkins. Gets a little close. Look like he's just setting his defense, but he's not. He is trying to drive in some kind of uppercut with a left hand. But at what point, George, does Carl Daniels need to become more active? I think that he's conceded the activity part now. He's just looking for one shot. There it is, one. All night he's got his eye looking at that shot. Nate Hopkins missed there. He came back with a counter straight left. when you're fighting a guy like Daniel who fight with his eyes, watching everything. All right, my turn, my turn, my turn. My turn, fellas. Undisputed middleweight champion Bernard Hopkins in complete control here as the eighth round comes to a close. We will see undisputed light heavyweight champion Roy Jones 
after this fight. And for more on that, let's send it down to Miami and Jim Lampley. And here in Miami, while the crowd in the American Airlines Arena watches Hopkins Daniels on the big screen, Roy Jones has dispensed with watching the middleweight fight and has begun to warm up for his assignment here, a light heavyweight defense against Glenn Kelly. Meanwhile, a programming note on HBO starting March 28th. Look for the return of On the Record to Bob Costas after last season's debut. Look for more of Bob with special guests from the worlds of sports and entertainment. Please note, On the Record's new start time and date of 10.30 p.m. Thursday nights throughout the 12-week run of the season, only on HBO. We continue now with two undisputed champions fighting in separate locales on HBO Sports and perhaps headed toward each other. Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins back to Reading. Blood now coming from the right nostril of Carl Daniels. Daniel is trying to set a trap. Two steps forward, back up, trying to get that left uppercut in. Hard, crisp, right shot to the body by Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins not letting him off. Makes him pay for every step back. Total punches from CompuBot's punch stats. Hopkins more than doubling Daniel's output. In the landing department, 169 to 82, and Hopkins obviously throwing more, 386 to 215. No, 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 no. Daniel no, sits, no, no. trying to get in position for that uppercut. I'm telling you, I try all night. come through with more aggression and he is easily in control Stop. through now This is how Bernard Hopkins got here, beating a lot of opponents you never heard of, some you have heard of, always ready to fight. Always ready to fight, no matter what style, no matter what inspiration is in front of him.
fight. Let's bring in Arthur McCanty Sr. to see how he has the fight scored through nine. I have it as a complete shutout. I find that Daniels is fighting a very defensive fight and is being allowed to be caught in the corners, which is a highly, highly dangerous position to be in. So I have the score at present 90 to 80. The hop starting to use his left jab a little bit. Hopkins keeps his hands up. Though he's in control, he's still not getting too awkward and dropping his hands too much. Back to the basics. Bernard Hopkins has been a hard, serious, successful fighter his entire career. But just now, starting to get under the limelight, his first million dollar payday was against Keith Holmes. Hopkins says it doesn't matter. He's been saving his money all along. He told us yesterday he's just started tipping at restaurants. I'd like to see him Oscar De La Hoya. That's what I'd like to see. Waiters and waitresses used to run <laughs> when Bernard came into the restaurant. <laughs> This Hopkins has deserted all of his bad tactics. He's really fighting a clean boxing match. It really is. We thought there was potential for some dirty antics just from the standpoint of the difficulties in the styles. Slick southpaw. He's been true to form now. He's fighting like a real champion. Throwing left hand. Jab. Going underneath with hooks. Straight right hand. Lead right hands, did hooks, everything you want. Get your book fighter tonight. Displaying both quickness and power. Stands on his in pocket. Now, what impresses me is that here he is at the age of 37. I knew just, it was coming. I knew it was just coming. Just turned 37. <laughs> I knew you know, it was coming. And still has the motivation to get into supreme condition every time out. <laughs> Undisputed light heavyweight Roy Jones is no longer watching, but he might want to take a peek. But Arn Hopkins is serious. Let's send it down to Jim Lampley in Miami on this special night of HBO boxing. And we bring you back to the American Airlines Arena to remind you once again that in moments now, you'll be seeing that man, Sydney, Australia, sanitation worker Glenn Kelly, the latest in the long line of relatively anonymous challengers for Roy Jones Jr.'s undisputed light heavyweight crown. As always, the spotlight is on Jones. The expectation is for an easy Roy Jones victory. We'll see if that's what happens when we come back down here for the second half of our two undisputed champions, Doubleheader, back to Redding. The fight, Frank Cappuccino is waving the fight off. The fight is over. Carl Daniels. Carl Daniels' corner elected not to go on. Those body shots were breaking him in half. And there was no way. This guy, Daniel, has no power to pull it out in the latter round. It was a merciful decision. You know, he told us, George, that his mother told him he is a great, great grandson of Joe Lewis. Isn't that something? Uh, judging by how he fights, I would have to question that genealogy. <laughs> and the guy, the guy put on a good shot. He just didn't have the punching power to keep up Bernard Hopkins off of him. You're right. He fought every minute. There. Let's take a listen in to see exactly what happened. How you feel, baby? Uh, sure. You have to close him up a little faster, man. Come a little faster. Be quick. There you saw it. Carl Daniels shook his head. Tommy Brooks asked him how he felt, and he simply shook his head. No. Tommy Brooks is a merciful guy because he's seen this guy really taking a big bad beating from Bernard Hopkins and it wasn't going to get any better. I don't know if I would quit, but 
job of the corner to, to say, I don't want any more. But it was a merciful thing to do. He wasn't going to get any better. Probably he was going to get the worst of it if the fight was going. All right, George, and now for the official decision, let's send it into the ring. Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, upon advice of the corner, this bout has been stopped by a referee in charge, Frank Cappuccino, at the end of round number 10. The winner by way of technical knockout, and still the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. So Bernard Hopkins remains the undisputed middleweight champion, and he did an impressive fashion. Let's take a look at the final punch stat numbers. Hopkins more than doubling Daniels' landed output, landing at a 45% rate. Daniels at 38%, but throwing just 249 punches. And here's where Bernard Hopkins won this fight. Power shot after power shot to the body. 199, nearly four times more shots landed by Hopkins than Daniels, landing at a 56% clip. Very impressive. Larry Merchant is standing by with the winner, undisputed middleweight champ Bernard Hopkins. Bernard. All right, thank you very much. Bernard, congratulations. What is, you, what is your feeling about setting a new record for successful middleweight championship defenses. It's great, Larry. It's great. It's great because no one can take that away from me. My daughter, which is three years old, can remember that when she's 18, when people get to talking about her father. But first, I'd like to thank Roni Paulus, GoldenPaulus.com, and Roni Paulus for sponsorship. We don't do like commercials uh, here, yeah, they uh, Bernard. Me. The check is in the bank. Well, that's their problem, oh, not, yeah. not ours. All right. <laughs> but I'd like to thank them. Uh, you were facing a slick, cute southpaw. You've seen a few hundred of them along the way. Was there anything Was there anything different about this? How did you go about it? Well, I went about it the same way. They tried to uh, store my will on Carl Daniels, but he was tricky. I mean, South Pauls are tricky. And you know, Larry, I don't know how I look until I watch the tape, but I never really looked tremendous with South Pauls because he really didn't come to fight as far as exchanging. But you know, hopefully I don't have to see another South Pole no time soon. All right, it seems that you decided early on you better break them down to the body systematically. Let's take a look at a lot of those body punches and tell us about them. Well, I was out too far a little bit on some of the body shots, but I, I wanted to keep digging right there. The left hook to the body, I worked in camp with it and wear him down, because I know he was a mover and he, he covered his face up pretty good. And he gives you the body because he didn't want to get hit upstairs. So I kept on left hooks to the body and hopefully, you know, put money in the bank and get him later on. Do you think that this- Golden Palace. Do you think that this performance is the kind of performance that will stand out enough for the boxing media, the boxing public, to put you on top of the rankings of pound-for-pound -pound fighters to demand a, a rematch and showdown with Roy Jones. As long as I'm a threat, that's all that matters to me. And you know what? I believe Vernon Forrest, my good friend, who beat Shane Mosley, who most media had in front of me, should get the number one spot. But you know what? I like this, Larry. Whatever the public demands they can have. I want RJ, Roy Jones, pig raising, turtle raising, whatever he is. That's who I want to beat, Larry. But if they want to give me pound for pound, or pound for two, or pound for one, great. Come on with it. All right. Let's talk about the, the possible rematch showdown. There are two aspects. One is the money. Roy has stated his light heavyweight championship is on the line. He's been a star for a lot of years. He thinks he deserves more money what is your response to that? Well, Roy Jones been Roy Jones been eating a little bit more that much dog food that he's been feeding his pit bulls down in Pensacola, and it's starting to show on his brain. Roy Jones haven't done lately in the world of boxing to even consider himself pound for pound or even a superstar. Now, Roy Jones Jr. can't can't expect to get more than Bernard Hopkins after the tournament. All right, let's talk to you down there, Roy. Roy, give us your response.